Hi, everybody, and welcome to Mindset Mondays with Roseanne and Jenny. I'm Roseanne in Arizona, and I'm an enrollment and client journey coach in one of our programs inside of uh, Project 90. And I'm Jenny, and I'm in Northern Ireland, and I'm the community manager for the 30-Day No Alcohol Challenge program. Nice to see you again, Jenny. Nice to be on broadcast with you. Um, We're broadcasting this on Facebook Live across multiple um, public and private platforms. And we're also recording this for our podcast listeners who will be listening to it next Monday. If you're here with us on Facebook, please feel free to say hi and tell us where you're from and also ask questions. We'll save our shout outs and questions for the end of the show. Uh, If you'd like to know more about Jenny or me, please feel free to tune into the alcohol-free podcasts that are available on Spotify, iTunes, Google, and YouTube. There are multiple of stories and interviews there that will inspire you. Uh, Jenny and I's... um, Did I lose this? Okay. Uh, My story actually is on uh, episode 19. I know, Jenny, I'm still a, I'm still a, I'm not a pro yet. (laughs) These shows are new if you just, (laughs) my story is episode 19 and Jenny's is 39. So um, anyway, happy to be here. Before we get started, I'd like to offer you some free stuff by way of the Alcohol Freedom Guide. Melanie's in the background and she's posting it. This resource will be available below um, um, or right after the podcast. It will also be available to you uh, in the instruction and commercial. Today, we are talking about what really happens inside Project 90. Are you ready to disclose all of that with me today, Penny? All the secrets. <laughs> <laughs> all the secrets. Well, um, as an enrollment coach, I, I, I mean, a lot of people, I, I watch the, uh, and so do you, Jenny, in the 30-day programs, people have this perception that it's just a bunch of Zoom calls. Like, why would I pay for a bunch of Zoom calls? It's a little more than that, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. it is a lot of Zoom calls to start it with. but that's just calls. part of it. But our success is based on five pillars, and that's what I just want to touch on today. And Jenny and I talked about maybe um, going through each of these pillars in the upcoming week so that we really get clear about why this makes such a big difference in people's lives. Um, so the five pillars I always like to call, talk about inside our um, enrollment calls are coaching, accountability, community, aspiration and inspiration, and finally investment. So I just want to kind of talk first about coaching. And, and I thought maybe the best way to do that is to talk about personal experiences and how we were inspired ourselves, because this isn't a commercial, right? It's just, this is how coaching affected us. So Jenny, I'm going to just let you go first and talk about your coaching experience inside. Sure. sure. Um, The coaching and project 90 really was, was fantastic for me. Um, Some of you will, will know a little bit about my story, but basically I joined project 90 just a few weeks really after my husband passed away so I think it's fair to say I was in a um, quite a difficult place Um, and really what Project 90 gave me in terms of coaching was not just the information and support I needed to get alcohol free but I just learned so much about how to manage my feelings, my thoughts, my behaviour and a lot of that went for me, so much wider than than just the alcohol-free journey. So through the coaching that I got on Project 90, honestly, I I learned how to start to cope with and process my grief. Um, It was almost like a a bereavement support service. And the way in which the coaching works is you have um, group Zoom calls, which take place several times a week. I actually attended probably three or four calls every single week. Um, those are led by head coach Kevin, um, and there'll be anything from half a dozen to a dozen people on the call. 
and everyone will share and then we'll be coached through everyone's experience and how best we might manage those experiences. And, and you just learn so much from hearing what other people are going through. On top of that, then, there's the one-to-one coaching call, which you have every week with Kevin. And that's a brilliant opportunity for what it was for me to, to dig in a bit deeper into things that I was just starting to deal with and wrestle with and, and get a bit of Kevin's wisdom on, on particular aspects um, of, of my life that, that I was trying to work through. So really for me, the combination of, of Kevin's wisdom, and I mean, that man is nothing short of a, a guru. I learned so much from him. I have, I have a notebook full of, of quotes from Kevin. And we have a little, a little line. I think it was Danny came up with it in the alumni group. Um, WKKD, wicked. What would Kevin do? Um, because he just is is so good at, at offering a different perspective, and, and probably that was one of the things I find most useful. Just getting his and other people's different perspectives on my situation and different things that I could manage in a more in a more constructive way. So that was the coaching experience for me, Madame. <laughs> Thanks, Jenny. Um, yeah, and for me, I and I do want to mention that people don't. We, I try to say this as, as in as many places as possible, that this is really a coaching pro- program while you put alcohol to the side because we're really dealing with a lot of the reasons why we reach for alcohol. I'm stressed. I'm depressed. I want to have fun. I want to fit in. And so, um, you know, or I do it for business. I entertain. I'm in sales. So in these meetings and in our private calls, we're talking about how we manage the trigger that's creating the pattern of grabbing the drink, right? Let's go out and have fun and have a beer. It could be as simple as that. Or I'm depressed. Let's have a drink and like numb yourself out. And for me, I drink because... Primarily, I was, I love to have fun. So that was definitely a big part of my life too. Um, but I, and that's how my drinking started. It's very social, right? Um, but then um, I, I really used alcohol to numb and check out completely. And so my personal coaching was about, finding something different to operate, analyzing situations different in my mind, because sometimes it's not what happens. Um, I interviewed Troy Love as an expert a couple of weeks ago, and, and it's not always about what actually happens to us. It's about the stories we tell ourselves, right? And so that's how coaching helped me, is dissecting that story I was telling myself. And and getting a different story. Um, The next one we want to talk about is accountability. How did accountability, um, how did that work for you, Jenny, personally? Again, for me, the accountability was layered, if you like. So accountability to the group, because you're turning up to group calls and and you want to be able to say, yeah, I'm I'm still alcohol free. I also felt a very personal accountability, as I think everyone did, to to Kevin, um, the head coach, and and again the opportunity to to stay on track with him on a weekly basis. Um, and and I think there was another layer of accountability, which was kind of to myself, because I didn't want to be showing up any less than the best person that I could feel I was starting to become. Um, so I was holding myself accountable through holding myself accountable to other people, if that makes sense. And actually, that probably wasn't something I'd really done before. Um, previous attempts I'd had in trying in trying to quit, I'd, I'd almost felt I was a failure because I couldn't do it on my own. And looking back now, it's it's so easy to see how wrong that was. It, but that piece of the jigsaw was what always had been missing for me. 
it wasn't until I got into a group environment that I realized how important that that was in the process and, and you people will hear this said all the time uh, in our programs but change happens in groups and, and for me that's what the accountability was all about right yeah, that's uh, going to be our next point, the community, in terms of yeah. that. That, But, um, yeah, thank you. I, I do think accountability for me is taking the cycle and the conversation out of your own head and having integrity with your word because yeah. having integrity with myself was getting to be a real issue, right? You, for most of us who are, are dealing with this, we're – like, okay, today is really the day. I'm serious. Like, you, you know, you're right on your fridge. and But who are you accountable to? Yourself, right? And um, and this program talks about not only accountability. I mean, you made a commitment not to drink, but that's kind of the side gig for us. Like, that's just a given. After you kind of get through your your initial period that may be, you know, detoxing your body, there is accountability in a lot of other areas, maybe in business, writing a business plan, um, making amends with a friend or a relative, trying to uh, fix a relationship, trying to fix a business problem. Um, there's a lot more things that we become accountable to because yeah. we develop some amount of confidence, right? Is that what you found as well? Yeah. Absolutely. And the fact that we were encouraged to make a different commitment every week on something in addition to being alcohol free was really helpful. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> and, and we'll talk about this when we come on to talk about aspiration, but really just having um, the opportunity to set different little goals for myself the whole way through the program and to be held accountable for those um, really helped me grow. For, for certain, yeah. All right. And what I loved about it too, I don't know if you, like, I didn't make a new goal every week, but to, I mean, you would be responsible for your own goals. We don't tell you what to do. Yeah. I mean, it could be, hey, I'm going to make my bed all week this week, right? It's just <laughs> measurable, right? And accountable. And you determine your own accountability. Um all right, third one, community, and you already touched upon it, and I think this is this is an important one, and I know it was for you and it was for me as well. So tell me how community affected you. Jim. Well, <clears throat> again, this was probably one of the aspects of Project, Project 90. I was actually slightly nervous about because I'm actually quite introverted and shy, believe it or not, and, and I was slightly apprehensive about oh my goodness I'm going to have to engage with these people I don't know and most of them are crazy Americans and what's it going to be like and and actually it was it was just fabulous because because people were open and honest and sharing their issues and the challenges and their wins you really start to get to feel that you know people even though they're in my case because I'm in the UK most of them were across the ocean and and you know, I never met them in person. I hope one day I will, but I haven't. But the, the thing which I think really, really um, developed that sense of community for me was the Marco Polo videos. Um, I didn't know anything about Marco Polo before I joined Project 90, but it's a wonderful little system where you can record little 90-second, two-minute videos just telling people how your day has been, what's been happening, something funny that's happened, something not so good that's happened and and it was a real sharing community and um, I find that enormously helpful because if I was having a particularly bad day um you know which I had quite a few of trying to deal with grief and stuff I knew I could go on Marco Polo and it didn't matter if I was if I was in tears or or what state I was in that someone would come back and respond to me and again it was just that ongoing daily support um and, and there was a huge sense of, you know, fun in that community as well, Roseanne. Did you not find that? Yeah, I, it's a combination of fun and sadness and just, um, yeah. I, I, and I think it's, again, getting that conversation out of your little head, you know, and that cycle of, 
uh, having a conversation with yourself and being free to have a conversation, the same conversation without guilt or shame or it's just belonging. It's a sense of belonging. And before I go on to my, I hope I'm saying your your name right. Hello and welcome to our live show. And thanks for checking in from Daly City, California. <laughs> um, Cassandra, wow, we have a following in Daly City, California. I, oh, it's Cassandra. I don't know where... Um, yeah. Jemai was, but I'm, I, uh, I said hi to Jemai late. Um, so community. Um, can I just very quickly say a very special hello to Jen, who I see is on here. Hey, Jen. Good to see you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, the community, I think, is having the freedom and space to feel like you belong. Um, it, Feeling that feeling of alone and that conversation by yourself is is truly hopeless, and I know that because I lived that conversation for five to ten years. And when you're just in there, I'm like, wait, I'm not the only one. Oh, yay! <laughs> I belong. <laughs> I found home. So um, anyway, uh, okay. Then we have okay. This is hysterical. I don't know if James is going to listen to this, but. He calls the, you know, he calls the five pillars aspirational, but I was like just swapping it out for inspirational. And when we were about to do this, I'm like, wait, what's the difference between aspiration and inspiration? <laughs> Sorry, you're a wordsmith. <laughs> As aspiration is something you hope for. And, and inspiration is something which comes from within you to give you what you hope for. Right. That, and that's my that's my non checking the dictionary definition. <laughs> and I think that's exactly what it was. There's a difference between you're inspired by others, but you're aspired to do something yourself. So I'm changing change I'm changing the five pillars. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, well, I, I'm adding to it. So one of the pillars is aspiration. But I, when I have my enrollment calls, I say aspirate. It's inspirational because people are giving you motivation to have aspiration. <laughs> You're go ahead. Talk about how you were inspired. Well, I mean the the. The grind rule of it all really was the going alcohol free. That's what started to open up doors for me because, as, again, as people always say, that's what started to give me focus, clarity, mental energy, all those things. Um, I was at, as you know, a, a crossroads in my life. I was in a position where my life had changed irrevocably. Um, I was going to have to find a new purpose and new direction and new meaning if you like I've spent five years nursing Clive so that was a big hole when when he was no longer with me um and, and project 90 gave me Roseanne I think what it gave me was the confidence to think about what I could be and what I could do next and and um you know, when I look at how my life has changed in the last eight months, I've set up my own proofreading business. I've started volunteering with a, a UK charity, which is a suicide prevention helpline. Um, I've become the community manager for the 30 day challenge, which is fantastic. So lots of things have started to come into my life that would never, ever have been part of it were it not for what I got out of Project 90, but I think more importantly, I would never have allowed myself to believe that these things could become part of my life because I wouldn't have thought I was capable of it. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that's the aspiration and the inspiration coming together, if you like. Yeah, it's, it's a really important part um, for me. And it's just been... As the as the program grows, I think it's more and more inspirational because we have the, you know, the alumni that are more active uh, and inspiring others. The beyond ninety, like, hey, it's pretty cool over here. Come on, and you're just watching people when you go in at a day or three days or a week, and then you see somebody at three weeks, like, oh, they feel better. 
um, at 45 days, their, their face is changing, right? Their confidence has blossomed. At some point between 60 and 90, um, they, uh, they get this click like, wow, you know? And so it's hard not to be inspired and, and have aspiration because you're like, okay, that's what I want. That's why I'm staying in this. That's why I'm sticking here. And you're in and you're in, you know what I mean? And it's just constant. And then as you become, and Jenny, you were the epitome of this. As you grow in confidence and learn, and then you turn that information that you turn that around and you become a great inspiration for others. You were you were such an inspiration for so many by just saying, look, guys. I'm here on the other side. I, I, you know, focus on Kevin, come in here and speak. It, you know, I, I just know how much you inspired. So, and you continue to inspire people inside uh, the 30 day, no alcohol challenge. It's definitely something you are amazing at. So <laughs> did you, oh, feel that switch? <laughs> did you feel that switch though yourself and turning from learner to teacher? Well, I, I wouldn't go that far because I'm I'm always still learning. And as you know, I'm part of the alumni group and those calls are very important to me as well still. And and I, um, you know, I, I think perhaps one of the things I learned was how much I still have to learn. <laughs> but if if anyone, you know, can benefit from any of my experience and, and you know, Rosanna, I'm always happy to share my story. It's not the the easiest of stories, but I'm not the only person in the world who's ever lost someone very dear to them. And, um, you know, I, I look back on the, the just the groundswell of support and love, absolute love that I was given in that group. Um, and that meant more to me than, than any bereavement counseling I could ever have paid for because it was, coming from a real place of 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 care um and if i can give even a fraction back of what i got from that from that program then i i think i'll have achieved something yeah oh you're definitely giving it back and everything you do right now that's for sure jenny <laughs> hey i want to take a minute before we get to our fifth pillar to say hi to steve i am so glad you are here as well he is from, where is Steve from? I don't know where he's from. Um, and Jen told us that she's from Ontario, Canada. And um, yeah, we are so happy. Marie, hi from Raleigh, North Carolina. It's just so fun. And and we're still looking for somebody from Northern <laughs> Ireland. <laughs> Uh, if, if anyone from Northern Ireland ever comes on here, I will give them a special prize. I, I don't know what it is, but I'll give them a special prize. You need to get confetti ready. Confetti. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then our last pillar as, as we get towards the end of the show is really the investment part. And um, it, it makes a difference, right? It, there, there are things we're, there's AA that's free and, and many people have tried that, that I talked to, they've tried it. And usually people that call us say, that's not for me. It's not, not for me. I know it's free. Um, but most of the programs or, or any type of coaching, whether it even be a personal trainer, it costs money, right? And you'll find yourself investing in yourself because, it's, it's out of bounds of where you're, I mean, let's just take personal training as an example. Jenny, have you ever used a personal trainer? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I don't know why I'm laughing. laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I did actually, uh, back in the day, um, I had a, an Australian personal trainer called Matt, who was absolutely wonderful because he didn't mind how much I swore at him. <laughs> But that's the okay. So okay, stop that right there. So that's the thing, right? You can read in a book how to do a deadlift or a curl, right? But a trainer is going to put or a, a coach is going to push you out of your place of comfort, 
And really that is key because a habit is your place of comfort. Loop, 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 comfortable. In order to change the loop, it needs to feel a little bit uncomfortable, which is why, you know, not everybody, but those people who choose Project 90 are choosing a coach because they need that eh, nudge to go into a level of discomfort, Um, meaning I'm going to process that conversation with my coworker differently. I'm going to process my conversation with myself differently. Those aren't easy things to do. Um, but, but you can read all the books in the, in the world, but sometimes you need a coach to, to just go, you can do this, Roseanne. That's basically what um, my coach did. And, and I do want to mention with respect to coaches, we have grown our coaching program. We have um, David in there. We have James coaching in there. We have Kevin. I coach mostly from peripheral um, means <clears throat> uh, through Marco Polo, but there are a lot of touch points for a lot of people in coaching and inspiring you all in different ways. And, um, and that part is fun. So yeah, there's a bunch of different coaching and, and look, if you're going to, you want to have um, capable coaches and Kevin's um, a trained addiction, addiction specialist. He's got tons, lots of other certificates and spent, uh, he is amazing. This is James. They just taught me so much, so much. Yeah. And, so, and I think the point was, Anne, and the, back to your example of the personal trainer, I mean, the point about paying for something is it means you show up. And and the other thing I would say is the distinction between price and value. You know, Project 90 isn't especially cheap. It's an investment. But hand on heart, it's the best money I ever spent in my life. I mean, my life has changed unrecognizably in the last eight months. Um, you, you, I mean, it sounds like a cliche, but it's a cliche because it's true. You cannot put a price on that. You just can't. No, you can't put a price on peace, joy, health, um, confidence, uh, all the things that it's just uh, incredible. And I think that most people, um, you know, I'm not sure. Have you ever heard of anybody who says this is an absolute ripoff? <laughs> Never. Never. If you, if you look at the absolute hours of coaching support that are available to you, um, it's it's a bargain. I actually said to James at one point, um, although I probably shouldn't have done that, I would have paid 10 times as much right. because that's what it was worth to me. Right, um, right. Yeah, and many people actually. Suzanne, do you realize you've been talking for half an hour? Oh, yes, I do. Thank you. <laughs> well, apparently, we could talk about Project 90 for a long time. So, yeah, let's. Um, if you do want to talk about Project 90, uh, Melanie is going to post in the chat a link to make an appointment with me, and I can go into more detail <clears throat> about. Um, whether or not it would be a good fit and how it works um, as it as it would relate to you and have a price discussion at that point. Um, <clears throat> if you're listening to our podcast, you will shortly hear um, a commercial that will give you that free guide and how to and information on how to book a call with me or any of the uh, two other amazing coaches that we have. And John Keltner and Russell Belcher, we've all gone through the the Project 90 um, program. Uh, Jenny and I plan on talking more about the specifics of coaching, accountability, community, aspiration, and inspiration, and investment in our future um, Facebook Live and podcast events. So, Jenny, it was great to see you and uh, you. always fun to work with you. So, yeah. and I'll see you, see you next week. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye, everyone. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my Quit Alcohol Guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. 
You can also text the word quit guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US, but if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word quit guide to the number 44222, or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90, that's one word, project90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? Computer. Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much and I'll catch you next time.